Good morning, brothers and sisters, to all, to all the brothers and sisters, all listeners, all those that are watching as well. They're watching and listening today. And while well, here we are joyful, joyful in meditating in the Word of God, and we rejoice in our Lord, in sinking to Him, and we feel very happy to have known this path. And so all of you are welcome because I know that there are many people who have not had the opportunity to visit our congregation, our church. And we congregate in the Church of God, Ministry of Jesus Christ International. And for over 50 years, the Lord is forming this congregation. In over 50 years, it was just four people who prayed on a Saturday at night till 1 a.m. And while praying, the Holy Spirit began to speak to us. God began to make us a series of very beautiful promises and to give us an order and to tell us to continue to congregate, to continue praying because he would make of us who were just four at the time. The Lord said, from this small flock, I will form a great church here in Colombia and in the world. And so the Lord said, I will provide all things, all the necessary things so that my church may grow. I will take charge of bringing people, the souls. I will convert them. And I will be in the life of each person to convince them of this marvelous work that I have prepared. And you continue forward in praying. I will support you. And I give God thanks because it's now been approximately more than 50 years. And God has fulfilled his promise, the promise that he made us. He has fulfilled because he promised to give us the spiritual gifts. He promised that the Holy Spirit would be manifesting among us and that he would be doing great miracles, great signs, healings, wonders, that he would be performing in the life of each man and each woman. And so God has fulfilled. He has fulfilled in such a way that in Colombia, we can say in Colombia, there is a church in every single city, in every single town, in all of Colombia, the church is present. There are very few towns that are left in order for the church to be there. And in all of South America, all Central America, in North America, in Europe, the church is present. We can also say that in almost every country, in every city, the church is there. And also in some places in Africa, some places in Japan, China, the islands like Australia and New Zealand, Iceland, all of these places, the church of God is present there and God is the one who has done the marvelous work because he promised it. And so God has fulfilled. And God has been manifesting with his power, with the Holy Spirit. That is the difference. The difference between many other places, other denominations, or other churches. The difference lies in that God manifests among us with his Holy Spirit, with his marvelous spiritual gifts. And so, if people or if someone is curious of asking us and wondering why we have this success that God is with us and he speaks to us and God convinces people and that his church is progressing and prospering and growing in all the world. And so there is no human power here because human power is not capable. So it is God the only one that works these marvels of having a united church, a unified church. That is the beautiful thing, the unity. But it is God with the Holy Spirit. And as it is God with the Holy Spirit, well then today we're going to discuss the promise that God made to the people of Israel in the time of antiquity. God made promises to the people from the time of Moses. 
he made promises that he would be sending his Holy Spirit, that he would pour his Spirit upon all flesh, on all those who believed in him and who had a willing heart for God, and that God would be with mankind. He would be teaching his ways. He would be teaching his doctrine. That God would be manifesting himself through prophecy, through dreams and visions. That God would be placing in his church apostles, prophets, evangelists, teachers, and pastors. These promises God made from the days of old. And these are promises that today we are seeing fulfilled from God's behalf. God has been fulfilling little by little all that he has promised. And the most beautiful thing is his support. And it is so how today, before we begin our teaching of the marvelous promise of the Holy Spirit that God made to the people of Israel in the days of antiquity, and today we are enjoying this glorious promise. Before doing so, we're going to sing hymn number 26, titled, Glory to God, Hallelujah. And we're going to sing, of course, without the instrumentation. We're going to sing with our voices, with our throats, with our heart to our God. And so, I suppose you are now comfortable, seated down, and ready to praise the Lord and to hear the sermon. And so this hymn, it goes 26, which now those who have your hymnal books, the brothers and sisters from the church, we're going to sing, and it goes... We are never, never weary of the grand old song. Glory to God, hallelujah. We can sing it loud as ever with our faith more strong. Glory to God, hallelujah. Oh, the children of the Lord have a right to shout and sing, for the way is growing bright and our souls are on the way. We are going by and by to the palace of a king. Glory to God, hallelujah. We are lost amid the rapture of redeeming love. Glory to God, hallelujah. We are rising on its pinions to the hills above. Glory to God, hallelujah. Oh, the children of the Lord have a right to shout and sing, for the way is growing bright and our souls are on the way. We are going by and by to the palace of a king. Glory to God, hallelujah. We are going to a palace that is built of gold. Glory to God, hallelujah. Where the king in all his splendor we shall soon behold. Glory to God, hallelujah. Oh, the children of the Lord have a right to shout and sing, for the way is growing bright and our souls are on the way. We are going by and by to the palace of a king. Glory to God, hallelujah. There will shout redeeming mercy in a glad new song. Glory to God, hallelujah. There will sing the praise of Jesus with the blood-washed throng. Glory to God, hallelujah. Oh, the children of the Lord have a right to shout and sing, for the way is growing bright and our souls are on the way. 
We are going by and by to the palace of a king. Glory to God, hallelujah. Glory to our God, and just as this hymn says, glory to our God. And thanks be to our God for life. Every day that we open our eyes in the morning, we say, another day of life God has given me. And although time goes by so quickly, but nevertheless, those who live with God, those that dwell with the Lord, for them, time is gold, is joy, it is pleasing and happy. And in the midst of difficulties, we rejoice in the Lord. And so, I shared with you and said that our God made some beautiful promises almost a little over 50 years ago. And today we are enjoying these promises. And this is why I want to share with all of you, share this testimony, basically, of that promise God made us, that he was going to give us his Holy Spirit, and that the Holy Spirit would teach us so many things in life. And so God has fulfilled his word. And this is why I'm going to share with you so that you too can seek this living God and also ask him to give you of his Holy Spirit and ask him to manifest in your lives that the spirit of God may be in your hearts. And so in this way, man is happy when God is with us. When God is in us, in our lives, we are happy. Life is better. And everything is peaceful. And everything passes, everything happens. But everything is easier to bear. The suffering and the tribulations, they aren't so noticed because God is there comforting us and telling us, do not worry because these are moments of difficulty you are facing, but it will pass. It will pass. The calm is coming. The triumph is coming. The blessing is coming. And so do not worry. I will help you. I will help you and I will bless you. I will help you move forward. So all of these are comforting words the Lord gives us through his prophecy, through dreams, visions, or revelations that God gives to us. And this is why I want you to learn and to know where it is that we have drawn so much happiness from and why we're so happy in the Lord. And we're going to be opening our Bibles in the Old Testament, in the book of the prophet Joel. In the book of the prophet Joel, the prophet Joel was prophesying in the same time that the prophet Isaiah prophesied. In the time of the kings of Israel, King Jehoash, Uzziah, and Amaziah. And in that time, we can say that there were a little, a little over 700 years before our Lord Jesus Christ. 700 years before our Lord Jesus Christ. And so I'm just giving an approximation, not the exact time. And so God spoke through Isaiah, through Joel, and other prophets. He sent messages to the people of Israel, and he told them to repent. To repent, to turn away from idolatry, to turn away from their sins. There were many thefts, many adulteries, many, uh, hypo much hypocrisy and envy, many things in that time among the people of Israel who supposedly God had raised his people to be perfect, to live uprightly with the Lord, but it was not so. And they turned away and they began to do everything the other nations did, all the bad things they did. And this is why God was anchored with the people of Israel. So God sent his prophets and sent many messages of exhortation and rebuke and threats and God would threaten them, but also God would give promises of blessings. If they repented, he would tell them, if you repent, I will bless you with this and that. 
But nevertheless, this did not happen. And so this is why the Lord determined to end with his people, to end his people, and to no longer have them as his elect. And so this is how the Lord, he shares that in Jerusalem, it was when God sent that king of Babylon to destroy the city of Jerusalem and to destroy the temple that King Solomon had built for the Lord. And this produced great sadness and desolation in the hearts of all those that live there. And so before this, before these things happened, God had spoken. God had spoken among many other things through Joel. And this is why I said, and I, if you read throughout history, you will see that it was about 700 years before Jesus Christ that Joel prophesied the following. In Joel chapter 2, verse 28. And this prophecy of Joel, what we're going to read here in Joel chapter 2, verse 28. We today are living this as a church, the Church of God, Ministry of Jesus Christ International, we are living these marvelous experiences. Glory to God. It reads in verse 28, And it shall come to pass afterward, the Lord is saying, it shall come to pass afterward. So whatever happened here in chapter 1 and also a part of chapter 2, it was all admonishments that the Lord made to the people, telling them to repent, do not sin, turn away from sin. You see, days of blessings are coming. Days are coming in which the perfect king is coming, in which the prince of peace is coming, a comforter, a messiah, a king. He will be the perfect king. He will give you joy. He will give you peace. The Lord spoke all of these things. He told them, turn away from sin because I do not want to punish you. So all of these things the Lord spoke, but the people did not heed that word. And here in verse 28, and it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit, says the Lord. Pour out my spirit on all flesh. So after I send the punishment and punish those that are culpable and they are erased from the face of the planet or the earth, I will then restore Jerusalem, but it will no longer be material. It will no longer be physical, but all will be spiritual. It will be a spiritual kingdom. And the believers, the followers of this kingdom, those that are there and belong to this kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven, they will also seek the Lord in spirit and truth because all will be spiritual. This is why in verse 28 it says, And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. So after... After the people of Israel lived and existed, and they were submitted, or rather governed and ruled through the law of Moses, and they had to fulfill physical commandments in order to please God. So the Lord offered something spiritual for the future. He offered that spiritual kingdom. And this is why it says, Afterward, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. So on all human being, this, this is all flesh, it's all men and women. And it says, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy. So your daughters and your sons. And it says, and your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And also on my men servants and on my maid servants, meaning to say, upon the remnant that God has kept in that time, because it was, this is again speaking 700 years before Jesus Christ. And God was seeing that he was going to preserve a remnant. That he would protect that remnant so that through that remnant, our Lord Jesus Christ would come. And so our Lord was not going to completely exterminate them. And so... And this is why he says, all my men servants and all my maid servants, in reference to his remnant, the group of Jews who were led from Jerusalem to Babylon, and they spent their 70 years as slaves of the rule of Babylon. That remnant God preserved. 
And this is why it says for their future generation, because truly they didn't enjoy this spiritual blessing because as I said to you, 700 years passed, so they had already passed away. But their generations, their future generations, did enjoy it in the present time in which our Lord Jesus Christ appeared on earth, preaching the kingdom of heaven. And in verse 30, it says, And I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. Those wonders were seen when our Lord Jesus Christ was preaching it says that he worked many wonders and signs healings he resurrected the dead the lord did many great and marvelous things and a great part of the population there was a witness of all of the wondrous deeds performed by our lord jesus christ verse 31 the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood but it was not the physical sun nor the physical moon but it was the principalities the rulers of judea or of israel of jerusalem those principalities that governed the priests the pharisees those that taught the law of moses all of them were great stars because they were the sun it was the people of Israel that shined, supposedly, for God had said they were his chosen people. And all of the nations always said that the God of the Israelites was a powerful God. And so this is why they shined. They shined like the sun. But all of these are figures. There's, it's symbolism and, metaphor, and meta, metaphors. And the, the moon as well. So all of those that lived in Jerusalem and Judea, it says they would be turned into blood. Yes, because they were put to shame once our Lord Jesus Christ began to manifest himself and the first who cast down the teachings of our Lord were his own people his own brethren the the same Jews they were those that rejected the Lord and this is why the Lord says that he would allow for the Sun to turn into darkness would no longer shine no longer shine but it was not the physical sun again it was that sun named the people of israel they would no longer shine they would no longer be that light they would no longer be so important or renowned among the nations because the lord had already taken away taken away all of the blessings in the moment that our lord jesus christ appeared preaching the kingdom of heaven very well so in verse 32 and it says it shall come to pass so meaning all those who call upon the lord so it says whoever men and women calls on the name of the lord on the name of our god however you may say it in your language in latin or in greek or in spanish or in any language god understands every language for he owns all things he's the creator of all and it says whoever calls on the name of the lord or jehovah that's the hebrew word and that was the word that was created and so they added some additional vowels in order for us to be able to pronounce it and it says here whoever calls on the name of the lord in english the name of god the name of the lord shall be saved shall be saved says here that is the promise of god for in mount zion and in jerusalem that mount zion and jerusalem it is the same thing it is the same city it says here that there will be deliverance there shall be deliverance yes because jesus christ appeared in jerusalem preaching the kingdom of heaven as the lord has said among the remnant the remnant the lord preached among them whom the lord calls now the lord called a remnant from his people of Israel, from the Jews. He had chosen a remnant that would believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, who would believe in the kingdom of heaven. As proof of that, we have the 12 apostles who were the first who the Lord Jesus Christ chose. Now we find a promise of our Lord here. A promise, like I said to you before, 700 years ago, before our Lord Jesus Christ, and now we can all go forward to John in the gospel according to John chapter 14. Here in the gospel of John chapter 14. Now we fast forward to this time, passing those 700 years, we now arrive to John chapter 14 when they share the story 
of all that our Lord Jesus Christ did, of all of the accounts and occurrences that happened when our Lord Jesus Christ was present in Jerusalem, in Judea, when he was preaching his perfect gospel or the kingdom of heaven. Here in John, the gospel according to John chapter 14, we're going to be reading in verse 15. And I said to you before that we were going to read regarding the promise of the Holy Spirit, a promise that our Lord, as I shared with you as well, my personal experience, my testimony, over 50 years ago, four people prayed. The Holy Spirit spoke to us. God spoke to us through the gift of prophecy. And he would tell us to continue forward, for he was going to raise a great church in Colombia and in the world. And 50 years have passed, brothers and sisters, and those who see us, I share with you that there is about 1,200 churches around the world. 60 countries rejoice of the presence of the church. And there are small groups in 101 countries. And so we see the fulfillment of our God. We see that after our Lord Jesus Christ, in this time, to this time, 2,000 year, years have passed, and we see the promise fulfilled. God never forgets anything. For God, years don't exist. Time does not exist. For God, one day is like a thousand, and a thousand is like one day. For him, time does not exist. Time exists for us as human beings. And this is why the Lord, he never forgot the promise that he made in Joel, that he would pour his spirit on all flesh. And this is why 50 years ago, he told us he was going to pour his spirit upon us and give us spiritual gifts. And we are enjoying those beautiful spiritual gifts. But we need willing hearts humble, simple hearts that accept and that believe in the Lord so that God may manifest. This is why we invite you, I today, am making this invitation to you with this scripture so that you may open your heart, be humble, and let yourself be guided by the Lord. Let yourself be led by him and you will see how God will come to your lives, your hearts, and give you happiness. He will give you joy and happiness and many riches, spiritual riches, and why not? Also the material to some God will give as well. And so that is the promise of our Lord. And we are speaking of the promise of the Holy Spirit. Now, 700 years past, or maybe 800 at this point, because this book was written sometime after our Lord Jesus Christ. So this is the story of John. And in John verse 15 of a promise our Lord Jesus Christ was preaching his gospel, preaching the kingdom of heaven. And he tells them, repent. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. And what was the kingdom of heaven? Who was the kingdom of heaven? Our Lord Jesus Christ. He was the kingdom of heaven. He was the king. He is the king that is reigning. He is ruling our hearts. Those who let themselves be ruled and guided by the Lord. He is the king. And so the kingdom of heaven, yes. The Lord said, my kingdom is not of this world. My kingdom is heavenly. Glory to our God. And so the Lord is now ruling. And all men, all women who open their hearts to God and who set themselves for the Lord, well, the Lord begins to rule alongside them. And here chapter 14 verse 15 among the things that the lord says when he's evangelizing he is teaching his apostles those that were listening in those moments and he tells them in verse 15 if you love me keep my commandments but the commandments of our lord they were the same commandments that god gave to moses on the tablets of stone they are the same commandments verse 16 reads and I will pray the Father, the Lord Jesus Christ says, I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you for a hundred years. No, wait, not a hundred years. Those who have a Bible will realize that it was not a hundred years that the Lord said he would give the Holy Spirit. Brothers and sisters, or people that are watching, people that go to another church and those who are also reading the Bible. As you can see here in verse 16 of John chapter 14, 
our Lord Jesus Christ promised. He says, I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper. Aside from our Lord Jesus Christ, another helper. That he may abide with you forever. The Lord never said that the Holy Spirit would only be for the primitive church, for the time of the apostolic church, as some say. Some say it was only for the time of the, ap or the apostolic time or the primitive church, and this no longer is valid. God has died. God has hidden himself. God is lost. Or God has run out of power. We don't know what happened, but that's not so. That is not so because the promise of our Lord says that it would, he would abide with us forever. And what does forever mean? Forever, I think what it means, at least to me, forever means until as long as I live. The day I die, well, things are done. So then a new phase starts in my life and that forever is right there. It ends there. So forever is forever of my life, the forever of the lives of human beings the manifestation of the spiritual gifts, the pouring of the Holy Spirit, because far beyond death, as it is the same God, he continues far beyond death. God continues to reign. God continues to rule. And God continues to bless his people, but from a different point of view. But here we are speaking of human beings, beings of flesh and blood, and God said, and the Lord Jesus Christ said, I am leaving, but I'm going to give you another helper because I'm going to pray to the Father that this helper be with you forever, meaning until the day you die. And even after death, he will be there with, with you as well. It won't just be for a limited time, but it's going to be forever until you die. And even after your death, the Holy Spirit will continue to be with you. Verse 17, the Lord says, the spirit of truth. That spirit of truth, that helper, that's his name, that spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. But he tells his apostles, but you know him for he dwells with you and will be in you. So that spirit of God, he dwells with us. But when I go and that helper comes, the Holy Spirit will be in you. He will be in your hearts for now. He is with you. He surrounds you. He surrounds you. He's near you, the Holy Spirit. But when I go, the helper will come and he will be in your heart. And it says, he dwells with you and will be in you. So inside, in the heart of that man or woman. And when the Holy Spirit of God is in the heart of a man or a woman, well, this man or woman, they stop sinning. This man or woman no longer sins. There's no longer adultery. There's no longer fornication, no longer any homicides or thefts. There's no envy. There's no vengeance. There's none of these things, selfishness, greed. There's none of that because the spirit of God is dwelling in the heart of a man or a woman and he cleanses them purifies them and takes away that sinning tendency and allows them to be perfect and to live an upright life to be human beings but to live an upright life honorable life as an example to all the others who are watching and seeing them and who will observe their testimony and example it is that this is what the holy spirit is for it is to change our life and our lord jesus christ in verse 18, he says, I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. So I will not leave you orphans because the Holy Spirit will come. And now here, the Lord, he tells them a little while longer and the world will see me no more. But you will see me. You, the apostles, will see me because I live. You will live also. On that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. Why? Because the Spirit of God is the one that unifies. The Spirit of God causes this union, and he unifies. In that day, he says, that day you will know that I am in my Father, the Father is in me, and you are in me, and I am in you. So who is going to perform that miracle? 
the Spirit of God. The Spirit of the Lord is who performs that miracle so we can say that a man or a woman are children of God, are beings who have God in their hearts because their works, their good testimony, their good actions speak for themselves. They, they speak for themselves. That is a great mystery. But that is what we or some of us have enjoyed. We have been enjoying these marvelous works of our God. We have been enjoying them for over 50 years up to now. And we have seen this is the truth. We have seen that truly the Lord is the same yesterday. He is the same today and he is the same forevermore. God does not change because God, he has no beginning, no end. He has no time as we do, but he is a God that lasts. He is everlasting. He's always there, attentive to his creation, to his creatures, to his children, to those men and women who he wants to bless. He is watching and observing who is calling out to him, who is invoking him in truth, who is seeking him wholeheartedly. And that is my invitation. And this is what I am speaking to you and uncovering and, uh, and sharing with you the formula or the recipe, as some might want to say. Some say, give me the recipe. Give me the, the formula. Why is it that you have so many churches around the world and why are you so unified? If I, I manage one church of 500, they might say, I manage a church of 500 people and it's hard. I'm not capable of managing this church. There's conflict, there's division, there's problems among the believers. I can't manage and handle it. And they leave and I can't retain them. People leave, they get angry, they form groups on the side, they form other churches on the side. Each one is dissatisfied and they go off and they form a church in their own way. They don't get along. They don't want to get along with me. So what, I, what do I do? What are you doing? Give me the recipe. Give me the formula, they say to us. And so now I'm giving you the recipe. The recipe. I'm giving you the formula. The promise of the Holy Spirit that God made in the time of antiquity is... The day that our Lord Jesus Christ appeared preaching his gospel, and he then rose to heaven. He died and resurrected on the third day and ascended into the heavens. And a few days later, about 40 days later, that the Holy Spirit descended and filled all those who were present. They filled them with the Holy Spirit. That's the formula. That's the recipe. It was not just for those days and for the apostolic church. No, because it's now been over 2,000 years, and now 50 years ago, even to now, we are rejoicing of the presence of the Holy Spirit. We are rejoicing of the prophecies, the visions and dreams. We are enjoying the spiritual gifts. And one of these days, I'm going to read to you all regarding the spiritual gifts because I want to give you all the complete recipe the complete formula. I want to give it to you. I want to teach it to you. I am not selfish. On the contrary, I want you all to be saved and all to be with God, all to be happy, all to have the hand of God by your side to help you, to raise you up, to lead you by the hand so that he may make you happy in every aspect. And so I'm going to show you the formula. And because of lack of time, I can't give you the complete formula, but I'll just a little bit. But I continue to invite you to continue listening to see the, what the complete formula is and what it means to have the Spirit of God. And from 50 years, 50 years ago up to now, we're enjoying those promises of the Lord. And so we are convinced that it was not just for the, prom for the apostolic church or the primitive church, but God has been manifesting throughout time. He has been manifesting in the hearts who truly want to be willing and seek him without being materialistic, without being interested in the material things in life, but to love God with your heart. And so God manifests. And in that, when I give you the recipe, 
I also tell you what God is expecting, demanding, so that this recipe is perfect in your lives. And so the Lord says, our Lord Jesus Christ continues to speak in verse 21. He who has my commandments and keeps them, it is he who loves me. So this is what I said to you before. We must stop sinning. Yes, but who helps us in that? The Spirit of God. He helps us so that we no longer sin. He comes and he dwells in our hearts and removes that tendency, that appetite, that appetite of the flesh, that carnal desire, wanting to continue to sin. There's no longer any envy or jealousy or adultery, fornication, none of those things because now we fear God, we respect the Lord, and aside from that, we love our neighbor, those that are around us by our side. We don't want them to suffer. And so it says, he who has my command commandments and keeps them it is he who loves me and he who loves me will be loved by my father and i will love him and manifest myself to him what a very beautiful promise this is that when men and women know god and the holy spirit enters the hearts of these men and women they no longer sin they begin to love God, and the promise is that whoever loves the Lord will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. And how will the Lord manifest himself to us? Well, God manifests himself by working, by working healings, wonders, signs, delivering people, giving them peace, giving them the joy and happiness providing them with all things necessary, giving them a job, giving them the money, the clothes that they need, protecting them from danger, protecting them from threats, protecting them from all evil, all sorts of evil, the Lord is protecting them. These are the blessings. This is what we call God manifesting himself in your life. God is manifesting in your life by giving you the material, giving you the spiritual, and allowing for you to have peace and joy in your heart and for you to have somebody, someone in who you can trust in or someone who you can go to in the moment of need. In the moment of danger or tribulation, you have someone who you can go to. You can go to our Lord, our God, our Father. And he is there, attentive to resolve your situation, to hear you out, to help you. This is what we call a manifestation. The Lord says he will manifest. That is the manifestation of God to human beings that love him and do his will. And here in verse 23, because of course here they ask him a question. They say, Lord, how is it that you will manifest yourself to us and not the world? And he answers and says, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word and my father will love him and we will come to him and make our home with him. Well, the Lord will manifest to all because it is all those who open their heart for God. It's not just the, and the apostle. He was misinterpreting what the Lord was teaching. What he is saying is that those who keep the word of God keep his commandments that the Lord loves him and he will be attentive to him to help him and bless him. Verse 24 says, he who does not love me does not keep my words and the word which you hear is not mine, but the father's who sent me. These things I've spoken to you while being present with you. Now he says to them in verse 26 and the Lord, he emphasizes this, but the helper who is the Holy Spirit, whom the father, will send in my name he will send in my name once i ascend into heaven he will teach you all things meaning the holy spirit will teach all things and bring to your remembrance all things that i said to you because the holy spirit will come and will be with you forever he will be around for all the future generations that seek the Lord. And this is true because we bear witness. Our church bears witness that the Lord has manifested in the church with the spiritual gifts. And God has been protecting us. And in this time, in these days, during this 
pandemic, this global crisis, God has manifested in the lives of many men and many women and has healed them, has protected them from this virus, has discharged them from the hospitals healthy and those who have been sick at home and have not had the opportunity to go or have not needed to go to the hospital hospital because god has healed them in their homes and so in this time god has worked many miracles because there are, are many who are in need who don't have food and god has provided food for them he's gifted them with money and it has all happened miraculously god allows the money to appear for these people who need it and god has been blessing fulfilling the lord fulfilling his promises and so god lives he exists and so i invite you all i invite you all to start from now on to begin to research regarding the promise of the holy spirit begin to research regarding the spirit of god that moves in the midst of mankind here on earth we have the holy spirit we have the spirit of god who is teaching us who is guiding us who is supporting us who is the one giving us a new life and transforming us he is the one that is with us and is manifesting through the, the gift of prophecy, through the gift of dreams, which people have dreams. God gives them many dreams and he guides them through dreams, gives them advice on how they ought to do things and in visions as well. And so God is manifesting. And this is a part of the recipe and the formula that people ask so much about on how, how can we have unity or respect for the things of God? Because it is God who is in our hearts. He is the one that cements that value and that respect so that we love him and do his will because we are not ruled by human beings, but we are ruled directly by our God, by his Holy Spirit. And if there are people who perhaps are rebellious and stubborn and do not want to accept or believe and they want to stray, go astray. And if God loves them, he will give them a dream. He will give them a vision and says, no, come here. Come because I brought you to this place. So stay still in where I have placed you. Do not do anything else. Do not be stubborn. This is what our God does because he loves us and he wants us all to come to the knowledge of our true God. And so the invitation is for you all. Read the Bible and research. Research in the Old Testament because I know that there are many who love the Old Testament and don't believe in the New Testament. And you only search in the Old Testament, but if you search through the New Testament, you will find things of the Old Testament. And those who only want to read the New Testament and not the Old, will read in the Old Testament. And you will also find the manifestation of, of our Lord and the Holy Spirit. And so, when God convinces you one day, you will be in love all of the Bible with the Old Testament and the New Testament. You will be enamored with it. You will love it because God will put that in your heart. That is what God does with us. The honor and the glory is for our Lord. Let us now pray to our God. Pray for our needs and our petitions. Pray for the desires of our heart. Pray for all of your needs. There are people that share with me that they are worried, that they can't sleep at night because there are evil spirits that torment them at night and that don't allow them to sleep. There are those who have become ill. They feel terror at night. They hear voices that speak to them. They feel things and can't sleep. They feel tormented. Others who have a desire to take their life and others who have no food, others who have no money to pay their bills and the necessary things in their daily lives. And so let us pray. Let us pray to the Lord and let us ask him for all. Let us pray for ourselves and let us also pray for others, those who are in need, those that are sick and in the hospital, in their homes, wherever they are. Let us pray. And also, I, I give you some guidance that there are those who in this moment, there are people that are confined to their homes, quarantined, and they say that there are people who are, who are being tormented and they have no peace. So if there's someone that goes to church 
and knows the work of God has come to our church, well, lay hands on that other person who feels that way, who feels tormented because they say that it's maybe perhaps witchcraft or sorcery, evil spirits, lay hands on them. Even if you still don't have the Holy Spirit, even if you still don't have the spiritual gifts, don't worry. Do so believing in God, believing in the Lord because he is there, he is merciful, and God sees the intention of the person. And so lay hands and the per on the person who is ill, maybe has sickness, Lay hands on them and you will seek. Ask the Lord. He will hear. He will perform the miracle. He will perform the healing. So now let us pray, O Heavenly Father, Eternal God. We give you thanks, Lord, on this day. We give you the honor. We give you the glory. We give you all the praise, Lord. We give you thanks for your love. Thank you, Lord, for your promises that you have made us for those promises from the time of antiquity you've made to all of your servants, to your children. You made them marvelous promises, Lord. And all you have been fulfilling throughout time. Some promises, it has taken some time to fulfill, but other promises are fulfilled quickly in our lives. And we too, we know you, Lord. We know you that you have made us promises and you have manifested in our lives just as you did so in the time of antiquity. Those manifestations that you, Lord, performed with man, you have done so with us today. This is why we believe in you. This is why we trust in you. This is why, Lord, we do not want to pay heed or pay attention to other people's stubbornness or disbelief and the doubts people have and the rebelliousness because there are many that are rebellious and stubborn that don't believe and they go down the evil path and do what is wrong. And we do not give credibility to those things, but we move forward because we want, we believe in you. We trust in you and we have felt you in our lives. Lord, you are a reality in our life, Lord. And so no one, no one is convincing us that you exist because we ourselves, we know it. We ourselves through our experiences, we know that you live, that you exist, that you speak, that you answer, that you, Lord, grant us the desires and petitions and all that we pray to you. For, and this is why in this moment, Lord, we are before your presence and observe there are thousands of people, thousands that stand before you and each has a petition, each has a need, each suffers a problem, each Lord is calling out to you for what they need. May you hear them, Lord, have mercy and hear them, Holy Father, because in this moment, they don't have the opportunity to go to church and congregate to receive laying on of hands or for someone to pray for them or give them prophecy. And so you, Lord, you will speak to them. You will guide them through dreams or visions. And you, my God, will be with each person. You will lighten the load. You will remove the tribulations and the needs. You will supply all need. Lord God, your mighty hand performing miracles and wonders taking away cancer, these incurable sicknesses, cancer, and many others that you know of, Lord. Also healing the people that are sick, who have internal organs that are compromised, and also their ex external organs, their skin. May you, Lord, cleanse them. There are also people whose hair is falling out. Lord, extend your hand. May you work a healing from their head to their feet. May you heal them. May you deliver these people who call to you and pray. These people who have these types of needs, my Father. May you hear this prayer, hear this call, hear this plea, because we know that your mercy, Lord, have mercy, because we know your mercy is forever. We know your promises are faithful and true, and that you are a mighty God that listens to us. Thank you, God. Thank you, Holy Father. Extend your mighty hand upon every illness and take away this pandemic. Take away all of these evil things that bring misery and poverty to mankind. Oh, blessed King, extend your hand. Have mercy and give an opportunity to men and women to find your path, to, to know you, to follow you, to seek you and adore you, to praise you for you are worthy. 
and to have respect for your presence, for your existence. Oh, blessed God, manifest yourself to people. Manifest, Lord. Thank you, Holy Father. Extend your merciful hand and bless and deliver. May you cleanse each person, Lord. May you bless each person in every way, spiritual and materially as well. Everything we ask in the glorious name of Jesus Christ, your beloved son, to him be all the glory and praise from now and evermore. Amen. Glory to the Lord. Let us sing that chorus. Chorus number 12, which is titled the joy of the Lord. Glory to the Lord. The joy of the Lord is the strength of my life. The joy of the Lord is the strength of my life. The joy of the Lord is the strength of my life. And he gives me overwhelming and pure joy. If you are filled with rapture, let your songs abound. If you are filled with rapture, dance and praise the Lord. If you are filled with rapture, let let your voice be known. God will give you overwhelming and pure joy. The joy of the Lord is the strength of my life. The joy of the Lord is the strength of my life. The joy of the Lord is the strength of my life. And he gives me overwhelming and pure joy. If you are filled with rapture, let your songs abound. If you are filled with rapture, dance and praise the Lord. If you are filled with rapture, let your voice be known. God will give you overwhelming and pure joy. Glory be to the Lord. And so, Lord, you give joy to the hearts that are willing. Many blessings to you all. May my God bless you. And until next time, thank you. God bless you.